Earlier this year, we met Lord Baker, former Secretary of State for Education at the Association for Science Education Annual Conference. We asked him about his innovative but controversial university technical colleges and their role in secondary education. The purpose of UTCs is to train engineers, technicians and scientists. We work from 8.30 to 5, not a school day, and we treat our students as adults at 14, and that is transformational. We're about the only country in the world left with a, with a separation at 11. Whereas at 14, youngsters, as we've discovered from our movement, are quite capable of determining what their interests are at 14. And really, the movement which I'm now spearheading is trying to create a 14 to 18 stream. And we've now got uh, 39 UTCs open, another 20 waiting to open. I've just had a letter from the Prime Minister saying they're wonderful, he wants to see more of them. And so there will be many more in the course of this uh, government. Is it wise to ask students to narrow their educational focus and make such life-changing decisions so young? Well, we don't narrow it because uh, the curriculum for a 14-year-old is up to two days of the week. They're making things and designing things with their hands, either in computers or in workshops. For the other 60% of the time, they're doing the GCSE subjects. They're doing English, maths, probably the three sciences, uh, history or geography or a foreign language. Uh, and so therefore, if after two years, say by 16, they decide it's not for them, they can go easily back into the English education system if they wish. Not many do that, but we provide that as an alternative. What impact do you envisage university technical colleges will have on the skill supply in the UK? We're, we're one of the few institutions in the country, in the education system, which are actually producing skilled employees. The reason why we have no one joining the ranks of the unemployed is by 16, they're employable in, in companies. Companies see them as work ready. A, they're used to turning up at 8.30 and working till five every day. They also uh, have got a technical qualification. They have also worked in teams and in projects which you don't have at all in an ordinary school. And they've deal, dealt with problem solving. These are all characteristics that employers want. How would you describe the type of student who would particularly benefit from attending a university technical college? Those who are pretty fed up with being in their present schools because they're not learning anything which they think is relevant to their future lives. Uh, and uh, therefore, they want an alternative pathway. Um, the only pathway that people mouth in the education system at the moment is three A-levels in university. That is far too narrow in my view. And the purpose of UTC and of a career college is to provide other pathways of success, which can be just as rewarding financially in life as going to university. One of the criticisms levied at <coughs> university technical colleges has been that they divert funding away from further education colleges who've traditionally offered vocational training alongside academic courses such as A-levels. What advantages do UTCs offer over FE colleges? The problem with FE colleges is they have great difficulty in recruiting good maths and English teachers, number one. Secondly, they don't really understand curriculum work because they sell courses. And they sell those courses very well indeed. But you don't get a rounded education by going to an FE college. By coming to a UTC, you get a rounded education and you get usually very good maths teachers. In any educational environment, science courses can be some of the most expensive to run. Where some UTCs mm. and some of their courses are, have been badly undersubscribed, how will you ensure their continued financial sustainability? Well, they're now getting to the stage where they've been established for some time being oversubscribed. The one I went to this morning in Aston is oversubscribed for next year by a substantial number of pupils, so there'll have to be a selection of them in some sort of way. Um, and uh, uh, we're finding that when they got established, they established such a good reputation that recruitment problems are, no, are, are really ceasing to be a problem for us, except that local schools are ve very hostile to UTCs because they're going to take students from them. But the students we take from normal schools are much better in a UTC than stuck in their old schools. Nevertheless, some colleges have been undersubscribed. Yes, but th th that is becoming less of a problem now. Um, at 16, they're very rarely undersubscribed. At 14, because it's a big marketing job to be done, and we've not had the greatest help from the department in changing the admissions code to ensure that teachers at ordinary schools must make of the knowledge of what's available to students at 14 available, and they must actually say, this is an alternative which you should consider. They do that at 11, they do it at 16, they should do it at 14. In August last year, <clears throat> University Technical Colleges reported their first set of A-level results. The A-star to C pass rate was 48%, compared to the national average of 77% in schools. 
What action has been taken to address this? Well, to begin with, as far as A-levels are concerned, we're up with almost anybody in A-levels. Uh, on uh, 14 to 16, at 16, we're finding that the level of education in English and maths that many of our students have is quite frankly appalling. And this is an indictment of the English education system. And so we're working on that. We have teams now improving both of those subjects. But when it comes to it, the real test of a school is that when students leave at 16 or 18, how many join the ranks of the unemployed? How many get a job seeker's allowance? We are very proud of the fact that we set as our target there should be no needs. That the youngsters, when they leave at 16 and 18, should have a destination which is not unemployment. And last uh, July, we had over 2,000 students leaving. And at 16, we said 100% was the target, 99% met it. At 18, 100%, 97.5% met it. How many other schools in the country have that record? Very, very few. <laughs> <laughs>